The mission of the Institute for Nanotechnology is to help with the adoption of nanotechnology into Canadian industry, to um, translate the research that's been ongoing in nanotechnology into commercial applications. We're a leader in material science innovation because of the world-class facilities that we have and because of the people that we have here. We also want to provide an experience for the students at the University of Alberta. What we're trying to do here at the National Institute for Nanotechnology is really act as that translator between some of the really cool science that's going on at the university. We are on a University of Alberta campus. So that means that we have a lot of students who are cross-appointed, who work in both the university and this national lab setting. And this is really great because the students bring so much enthusiasm and motivation. If you're doing research in nanotechnology, and material science, we have everything here. We have state-of-the-art electron microscopy and all the other spectroscopic techniques you need for being able to see into the nano world. So microscopy is really important to us here at Nint um, for the basic reason is that it allows us to see what's going on at the nanoscale. HEMIC stands for the Hitachi Electron Microscope Product Development Center at Nint. This was made possible by a collaboration between the federal government, the government of Alberta, the University of Alberta, and of course Hitachi High Technologies Canada. This collaboration has enabled us to place several high technology new pieces of equipment here, electron microscopes, that have not been released in any other part of the world. This is about co-development of products. What we do is we have experts that look at what is the next generation of microscopes um, that allow us to do uh, nanoscience and how can we improve, uh, improve those products or those accessories that make the instruments more accessible, easier to use and so on. The expertise that exists here has benefited our company by jointly allowing us to develop new products in conjunction with key scientists that exist here on campus. What's really important to us now is taking the expertise that we've built up and working with the industry. Partnerships are vitally important for the research we carry on here at the Institute because they're actually the places where we start to develop the really interesting research questions. Partnerships drive knowledge and knowledge drives innovation. We do excellent research of course but we do research that's relevant to uh, the Canadian industry and so we basically translate the uh, research into uh, commercial applications. The Institute really provides the, the technical knowledge and the expertise to help companies bring their product to market as well as optimize their product and also determine whether or not their products have bioactivity. Currently in my lab right now, we're really working toward understanding how the skin works. We're trying to determine whether or not you know, we can generate artificial skin. We've used our stem cell technology in that regard to uh, create artificial skin matrices. But what it does is it allows companies and researchers to test products on human skin without actually using human subjects. And, and of course, it eliminates the need for using animals. One of the things that we're looking at is the performance of um, energy storage devices. We have a project working on memory devices that's looking at making use of new materials in memory devices. This, this is a sort of flash type memory. You can think of it like a flash drive that's using new materials in order to gain advantages in terms of the switching speed, the retention times. Flash memory is, takes a lot of energy to run it. It also has a limited cycle life. So what we work on is, a, is an alternative to that, which may get around the, uh, the high energy requirement and also the, the cycle life. The Institute thinks that solar energy is, is an important area of research for humanity. We're looking at flexible plastic solar cells, solar cells that you can paint on the wall and generate electricity. And these would be solar cells that you could spray coat or make via roll-to-roll -roll printing, which is the same way you make newspapers. So we'd like to be able to just print out plastic flexible solar cells that you could take anywhere that could be incorporated into clothing, be rolled out as window blinds on roofs. One of the roles that we've taken on internally is, is to really foster the responsible adoption of nanotechnologies. And so what that means is we want to have an understanding of how they're going to affect the environment 
or potentially the public at large. We serve as a very effective conduit in bridging companies to academics but also allowing the two to talk to one another and, and put together commercial products that work. In a sense we have that continuum from the excellence of research to uh, research that's relevant to industry and it's impactful because it leads to uh, commercial applications. We're not a university department, we're not a standard NRC institute, and the promise is to make the best of both those worlds. The expertise that exists here is second to none.